Coming up on Mountain News this morning, we have more on the WYMT Food City Mountain Basketball Classic scholarships. And Kentucky's health officials are warning the Commonwealth of an increase in respiratory illnesses. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfi. We're just past 6.30 on Friday, December 8th. Now let's check in with Chief Forecaster Brandon Robinson for a look at your forecast this morning. And Brandon, I would say today doesn't really, or it's not going to feel like your average Friday in December, but it's going to feel no. nice outside. Listen, I'm going to call you out for just a second. You're on the struggle bus this morning, I think. <laughs> I almost just didn't know the date. I can't get my words out. It's, it's, I'm sorry, y'all. Hey, it's Friday. I know. I it's can't Friday. even use we, the we're, excuse, we're, we're, though, that it's Monday because it's we're Friday. Just co we're just coasting. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah, we're just coasting into the weekend. But you're right. It is basically a very warm weekend in December. But unfortunately, what goes up? will come down. Let's take a look at Wayne County this morning. Kentucky Mazinac Cameron just north of or northwest of Monticello and you see a little bit dark there but not too bad this morning kind of giving you a look at Wayne County. We're looking at temperatures from the 20s to the 40s this morning. Looks like Irvin is our new warm spot at 47 and Jonesville is our new cool spot at 27. So your day planner we're all going up. I tried to split the difference there this morning with the temperatures in the 30s. A few clouds out there later today but it is going to be a gorgeous day out there but that will not last. We'll give you the first alert on a weekend system coming up here in just a few minutes. Olivia. All right. Thank you, Brandon. The annual WIMT Food City Mountain Basketball Classic Tournament was in its fourth night yesterday. As part of the tournament, WIMT partners with local businesses, organizations, and sponsors to provide more than 120 students with $1,000 scholarships. And three students are specifically selected each year to receive a Ralph Gabbard Broadcast Memorial Scholarship. I was able to talk with the 14th region winner, Kaylee Carson. Kaylee Carson is the kind of student every teacher wants to teach with college goals that will take her out of Wolf County, but career dreams that will bring her right back home. I plan on going to University of Kentucky majoring in agricultural education. Um, after graduation, I want to go to Oklahoma State and get my master's degree and then come back and teach at Wolf County High School in the agricultural department. Because for her, Wolf County will always be home and she hopes to one day return to her family farm where she fell in love with exhibiting livestock many years ago. In the spring, you go and you purchase an animal or multiple animals. They're just a little baby. So you take them home and you plan out their little feed ration and what you're going to feed them and how you're going to exercise them. And throughout the summer, you get to watch them grow and you get to exhibit them at shows. And it's mainly based on like their appearance and how well you do with your animal. And then at the end of the year, we go to State Fair in August and we exhibit there. With Carson and her sister being the only kids that show livestock in Wolf County, it has shaped her into the person she is today. From her dream of teaching other students about it to her current school involvements. I'm the FFA president and the FFA regional treasurer for the Big Sandy region. I'm a member of 4-H Livestock Club. We do multiple competitions throughout the year. Um, I'm part of Beta Club. I'm her secretary. All while taking a full load of college classes. She will be graduating in the spring of 2024, not only from Wolf County High School, but also Hazard Community and Technical College with two associate's degrees, one in science and one in art. She says the support she has received is overwhelming. I feel like my family and teachers have pushed me a lot to help me start taking classes and get me prepared. They're always there to support me no matter how much I'm struggling or on my work. <laughs> uh, they've been a really great help. <laughs> but just knowing that there's people there to help me and they want me to succeed and they want the best for me. And because of them and her belief in herself, she hopes to encourage others to shoot for the stars. And if you are anything like Kaylee Carson, you will likely land on the moon or eventually right back home in Wolf County, Kentucky. Take every opportunity that comes your way. My freshman year, I didn't think I would be doing this, but 
I got the opportunity to join early college academy, take college classes, took that chance, took that opportunity, and then here I am today. I'm super grateful for WYMT and the Ralph Gabbard Scholarship. Yesterday marked the 82nd anniversary of Pearl Harbor, a day that folks across the country remember each year on December 7th, honoring the thousands of Americans lost when Japan attacked Pearl Harbor. 107 year old U.S. Navy veteran from Clay County, Oakley Hacker, says he remembers when it happened and he fought in World War II, which followed the 1941 attack. They hit us on a Sunday morning. December the 7th. I remember that. And I remember boys are talking said, well, we'll whip them in, in a week. It wasn't no week now. It's a rough war. If you're cause, you have to go. And you, you want to do the best you can. World War II ended in 1945. Hacker says he was on a naval ship when the U.S. dropped the atomic bomb on Japan, believing the ship was going to capsize from the bomb's power. And a Pearl Harbor commemoration event was held in Williamsburg at the courthouse yesterday. A wreath was laid at the Whitley County Veterans of All Wars. We were told about a dozen were in attendance to mark the moment. It was presented by Daughters of the American Revolution and Sons of the American Revolution. Winter illnesses like flu, COVID, and RSV are spreading in Kentucky. Officials at UK Healthcare say they are seeing a sharp increase in respiratory illnesses, especially cases of RSV. Right now, 21 patients are hospitalized with RSV, and that number is increasing. Doctors say they are also dealing with a shortage to treat the illness. The manufacturer does not have enough supply nationally, so we are seeing shortages of that product. It's really designed for younger kids, the first RSV season, to try to protect them. Doctors remind parents to make sure your children are washing their hands and keep them home if they are sick to help stop the spread of illness. Kentucky has its first documented case of chronic wasting disease. This is a fatal neurologic disease that affects deer, elk, and other species in the deer family. It was found in a deer harvested by a hunter in Ballard County last month. That's in far western Kentucky. State fish and wildlife officials say they are carefully considering their next steps, and they always advise you not to eat meat from game animals that appear sick or in poor condition. The West Virginia Enhanced 911 Council says there were two incidents last week that left multiple centers without service for hours. The organization is filing a complaint to the Public Service Commission against Frontier Communications. One of those outages was November 28th at Mingo County 911. The call center went silent for almost nine hours. After officials say a vandal cut a nearby frontier fiber line and calls could not be rerouted to another county's call center. Officials say they want Frontier to provide a backup source for 911 centers so they will not lose service if a fiber line is cut. Frontier says they've seen a 70% uptick in copper wire thefts in West Virginia since 2021. The Letcher County Sheriff's Office is asking for help to find a woman who they say could be in danger. Selena Taylor was last seen on October 10th at Frazier's Personal Care Home in Ashland. Taylor is 44 years old, around 5 feet 5 inches tall, and weighs 195 pounds. If you see her or know anything about her whereabouts, officials are asking you to contact the Letcher County Sheriff's Office at 606-633-2293 or your nearest local law enforcement. A Corbin man is behind bars after he was found hiding in someone else's basement. The incident happened back on November 25th. Corbin PD received a call from a concerned homeowner reporting a prowler looking into vehicles. After a police officer conducted a home search, he found 42-year-old Charles Durham hiding in the basement. Durham was charged with third-degree burglary. He is being held in the Whitley County Detention Center. North Point Academy in Pike County opened its latest project this week, putting students in the store. 
The Jack Thrift Store is a community space that sells secondhand items, giving the students firsthand experience operating a business. The store is student organized and operated, and those involved say it serves two missions. The store just kind of helps us give back to our community at, while we're also raising money for ourselves. The store will be hosting a Christmas sale today from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. Coming up on 642, we are tracking some um, warmer temperatures in some spots this morning for December, especially I-64. Not too bad up there with traffic this morning. 45, one of the warmer spots. West-southwest winds at 15, so it's cranking out there. Dew points low, visibility pretty good this morning. Temperatures across the rest of the region, 20s, 30s, and 40s. Even in Wise in southwest Virginia have 41 this morning. 47, the warmest spot in the region up at Irvine, and then 27 in Jonesville, our cold spot this morning. Out the door forecast, we are heading up today thanks to some southwest winds. It's going to be a nice day with a mix of sun and clouds, but it will not last. Full forecast on the way here in just a few minutes. Olivia. Thanks, Brandon, and thank you for joining us. The time is now 642, still to come on Mountain News this morning. Yesterday, Hunter Biden was hit with multiple new federal charges in California.